Stereo's Trigger family of capos offers a buzz-free, in-tune performance for players of all kinds. They allow precise micrometer tension adjustment, ensuring the perfect clamping pressure, dialed into your exact playing preference, so you can set it and forget it. It's Ted Drozdowski, Senior Editor at Premier Guitar, and we're here at 3rd and Lindsley in Nashville with Samantha Fish, who doesn't come to town anywhere near as long as we'd like her to. Hello. She's got a brand new album called uh, Kill or Be Kind. <laughs> no, really, it's called Kill or Be Kind. She's got a brand new album called Kill or Be Kind. It's got a bunch of killer tones on it, a bunch of really interesting instruments, and she just happens to have kind of all of them here. Hey, Samantha. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for doing this. Thank really you for having me. It. Yes. <laughs> Man, are you wearing your number one guitar? Yeah, this is the one I, I say I probably play the most. It's my Gibson SG, and it just it rocks. It's loud. It, it the the tones are, you know, you can get quite a few variations of tone out of this thing. It's just my go-to. It's my go-to. Yeah, cool. I've been seeing you play that for quite a few years now. Yeah. Uh, and do you know what year it is? Um, I got it in 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. I was in a new guitar then. Yeah, it was new. Awesome. So it's only. Uh, it's only had you to bond with. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Uh, I think I pulled it right out of the box and started Excellent. playing it. <laughs> cool, cool, and it's all stock? Yeah, everything's stock on this. Um, like I said, it was just one of the first guitars I ever, I actually it was my first endeavor into online shopping. <laughs> and they had this guitar sent to me when I was in New York and I pulled it out of the box and it actually played freaking great. Go figure, it's a Gibson. Awesome. And, and yeah, it just I kept everything on it. Cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's classic, you know. It and is. Jimi Hendrix had a white SG, so yeah. it's just kind of cool to tread those waters. And you've got a bunch of other awesome guitars here on I stage. I do, I do. Let's take a look. There's a couple of Jaguars. You've got this really sparkly Dan Electro. And I'm always attracted to sparkly guitars. I have no yes, idea why. Yes, I just, I, I got that baritone um, a couple years ago. And this is the first time I'm actually going to play it on stage tonight. Um, but it's beautiful, you know, it's a sparkly baritone guitar. I, I like anything with with a weird sound or texture, anything that'll just make the show a little more diverse. Um, so that's kind of my you know, thought process behind getting this guitar. I'm just glad I found a spot for it in the show. Well, and you're a real tone hunter on record too. Yeah. Has, has that appeared on your albums that as well? I, it did. It appeared on the last record, so cool. I wanted to bring it out in the show. Excellent. And, and do you know how old that one is? Or I don't. Uh, okay. I bought it uh, at the Chicago Music Exchange used, but I, I didn't have the information on it. Great. But um. This is my Fender, Fender Jaguar classic, um, all stock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a guitar sweet. you've had for a while too. A couple right? years, yeah. I've had this one for a couple years. And uh, I mean, it was just, I, I bought it thinking I was like, this is going to be my next rock and roll Kurt Cobain guitar. And it's so light and jingly and beautiful. I, it, it makes it on all the R&B songs. Um, but it, I just, you know, I dig the shape. I dig the sounds and, and everything, all the uh, controls you can utilize. Cool. And uh, I have another one I got from Fender, because we're actually selling these. These are Samantha Fish uh, on the website, approved Ventura, Ventura, uh, you know, nice. style Nice. Is that a signature model, essentially? Or? No, it's not a signature model, but <clears throat> they, they came out with this Ventura series this year, and it's mm -hmm. just classic looking guitars, and I've been playing the Jaguars a lot. Um, so they gifted me this and a Telecaster. And I mean, it. I kind of like, I mean, this one's really nice, but I think I'm kind of favoring this one lately, just the, Does the neck have a slightly different profile? It feels a little bit different to me, but it, ju it also just, I think because it's newer and it's a little more, the, the pickups are stylized to sound like vintage. I just like the way it sounds better. Uh -huh. Does it have a little bit more dirt and grind in it's it? It's got a little bit more of a pickup. I mean, it just, it sounds a little louder to me and yeah, you can dig in a little more and do more. The, the, the pickups just feel a little more present. Cool. And a little bit louder. Cool. It looks like yeah. you're playing guitars that mostly have medium frets on them. Yeah. Or medium jumbos. Yeah, I, uh, 
Now, for a while, to you played Delaney's primarily, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and I still play every night. I still okay. play it every night. Um, I don't have the fish guitar with me. Last time I okay. talked to you guys, I was only playing that fish guitar. And it, it's at home, safe and sound. It has not been retired. I just couldn't bring that many with me. Okay, the Fisher Caster. <laughs> this one I've been playing a lot. It's my Delaney 512, humbuckers, um, Malfitano pickups, and um, I play slide on this one. Okay. I keep it in open D. So it it sounds great for that. I, I feel like the action's just right, and the tone is kind of broader, so it, it just lends itself to slide guitar. Now, what got um, you interested in open D specifically as a slide tuning? I like all tunings. Mm -hmm. I do open G. Uh, on the record, I have a song in open C. Open D, I just have a couple more songs in. Mm -hmm. So for the show, I moved some of my low C songs to open D, just for the sake of I don't have to sit here and tune while I talk to people or well, I know guitar tech doesn't lose his mind. For your previous <laughs> album, which was uh, Bell of the West, you yeah. went down into the land of open D and yes. other open tunings, and you worked with Luther Dickinson on that record. Yeah, well, Luther's kind of the one who introduced me to open tunings. You know, he was, when we were making the record, he'd been working a lot in open C in his, in his band and stuff. And he goes, oh, listen to this. It just sounds like Mother Earth. You know, I'm like, wow, that is really cool. And it just, I started working opening tunings as a songwriter because it opens up a whole new perspective on the guitar. You come up with different riffs, different melodies, just different things, you know, anything to kind of spark that songwriting yeah. thing. Yeah, and the live strings kind of have this really magical sustain in open D and yeah. open C too. Oh yeah. They just no, go they on just forever. Sings. It's really beautiful. And is that a semi hollow body? Is there a block yeah. going through the middle of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Full on. All right. So then a fan favorite, <laughs> the old beat up Stogie Box Blues guitar. <clears throat> um, it's my cigar box guitar. And this one is on the first track of the new record? Yeah, this is uh, the Bulletproof guitar. Cool. Yep. Um, you know, it's a P-Bass pickup, floating bridge. The thing is falling apart, but nothing else sounds like it. So when it breaks, so will my heart and <laughs> my aspirations to play cigar box guitar anymore. So uh -huh. yeah, I just, I dig this one. I've always liked the sound of it. Um, there's just something really mean and nasty yeah. in it. it it's got a great texture. And you've played some other uh, you know, unconventional guitars too. I think you had an oil can guitar did, at one point or yeah. a gas can. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. And I that one's also safely at home, not retired. It's just there because okay. I don't have a spot for it in the show. Okay. You but, know, people started giving me all kinds of crazy guitars. I'm like, I don't know if I want to be that girl who just who plays the yeah, kitchen the sink and the yeah. shovel guitar, you know. I, yeah. Maybe I should Go for some normal ones for a minute. <laughs> Have you seen the ones that Super Chicken down in Clarksdale makes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are a blast. His, my favorite is the one that's made out of the motor from an old ceiling fan. It yes. weighs like 30 pounds, yeah. but it's an awesome sounding guitar. It, it is, it is. And this is your acoustic. This is my acoustic. Just a Taylor, the Koa Wood. They had, um, they started making these about, I think, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really dirty, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just love the way it sounds when you Acoustically, it just sounds beautiful. It's really easy to play. And is this it's also a guitar that you might have heard on one of your recordings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all, pretty much all the acoustic tracks. I mean, I play, this has been my only acoustic guitar that I've used in the show, or I think this is my first acoustic purchase ever. Hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, one of the things that I really liked about hearing your records, and I know you started making records in 2009, I think, is that every record you just seem to explore new tones, new sounds, and you push your songwriting out further. Yeah. And I think that's one of the cool things about Killer Be Kind. Uh, I think you've really kind of taken your songwriting into a different zone. Yeah. Uh, at, while you're based in blues guitar, you're in a whole bunch of other exploratory genres, you know? And also, I think on this record, there's some really interesting singing you're doing, too. Thank you very much. You know, Thank you're you. really doing some cool uh, vocal stuff, uh, holding and bending notes in really interesting ways. And it's just nice. a, a great listen. Thank so you very much. So if you much. haven't heard it yet, yeah. go listen to it. It's too um, kind. Shall we, shall we talk about your amp while we're here as yeah, well? Yeah, let's talk about the amp. Now, this okay. isn't my normal rig, but... Now, I know you do play an Andrew typically, right? But no, it's a, I've, I been playing, um, I've been playing a Camille head lately. Oh, you have? Okay. A big 412 cabinet. Ah. Um, this is kind of my backup rig because the other one is on its way out to the West Coast right now. Okay. It's an Andrew head, 50 watts, um, and I'm using the Camille as just a backup in case something goes wrong. Yeah but it's a 212 cabinet at this moment. Yes. Yeah. And if that one goes down. So it's 50 watts, 212 cabinet. And uh, I know you, you have been using their gear for a while, the Andrew stuff. I love Category what? 5. I yeah, just, I'm sorry, it's, the it's really, five, yeah. I mean, it's a great boutique amp, mm -hmm. all tube, you know, point-to-point -point wiring. It's really simple. 
Um, I like that. <laughs> I don't need I don't need a computer to crack into it. I like if I got you know if it has to be fixed on the road, you can actually you know do it. And and it just sounds great. Really, these amps to me sound like you know the best tube amp just when it's already warmed up and primed and it's like the perfect gain and I, I just dig it. Yeah, well, know, when you played, it matches me well. Well, when you played a little bit for us earlier here, the sustain was really terrific. Good. It was killer. Well, good. It all sounded really great. That's the point. That's Beautiful. what I'm, I'm trying for. Well, perhaps we should look at some pedals. Yeah, we, we got, got a pedal cool board, board down here. here. Did you want me to demonstrate some? I think that would be ideal. Okay. Let's hear what this stuff sounds like. This is the biggest my board has ever been. I think awesome. last time I talked to Premier Guitar and did a rig rundown, it was kind of embarrassing because I had like no pedals at all. <laughs> I had nothing to talk about. I had like one guitar and I was going straight into an amp and it was the shortest interview ever. <laughs> but now I got stuff to talk about. Awesome. Shall I flick the Andrew back on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Great. Let's see. All right, so clean, you know, it's pretty light and jangly. Um, uh, my main go-to pedal, I say the one I can't live without, Desert Island pedal. It's probably my analog man, King of Tone, and it's old and it's beaten up. A friend of mine gave it to me. Um, and I, I was like, maybe I should just get another one because the, uh, the, red, the red feature, which I think is the dirtier channel, doesn't actually work anymore. Uh -huh. So I thought about getting another one, then I saw how much they're going for on eBay and how long the wait list is. I said, I'll make it work. <laughs> um, so you go right into the volume pedal and then into the analog man first? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I go through the volume pedal. Um, and I, I just use that for just nuanced stuff for slide guitar and swells and you know, the, the volume pedal is probably actually my main go-to. I probably use that the most in the show. But as far as pedals go, Analog Man is pretty mean. I mean, it has more features than that, but mine doesn't. Um, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's kind of what I need it for. When, I'm, when I go into a solo and I need something loud and aggressive, bang. That's it's there. Pedal. It's right there. Cool. And then when you need something even louder and more aggressive, you've got your JHS Mini Foot Fuzz, and I like it because it's mini, and you can fit more on a pedal board, but. <laughs> It's just loud and aggressive. Now, is that the fuzz you used on um, Love Your Letters on the album? Love, yeah, yeah, Love Letters. I think I used <laughs> it on Bulletproof. Yeah, that the solo on Love Letters. Yeah, it's got that. I tone. actually used that pedal a lot on the record. Okay. Surprisingly, with with all the solos, it just like I said, it, it gets a, it's the most aggressive. So in the studio, when you're looking for this wide range of sound. I tend to kind of throw everything at the wall when it comes to the solos. So. Sounds so. like a good strategy to me. <laughs> so then moving on to my super shifter, <clears throat> I probably don't utilize, I don't utilize even a fraction of what this pedal can do, um, but I kind of use it, I've got a few moments in the show where I do either dive bombs or like, you know, the really high up octaves or something, but like if you're, if you want to go up, you can, ooh, that's not fast enough. You can do it faster, hang tight. That was, that's like the slowest it's ever gone. Yeah, just so it's like you get that Tom Morello thing yep. happening if you need it. Um, and I dig that you have a pog on there too, because whenever yeah. there's a pog, you know there's some weirdness. Yes, yes. So no, I, I do use like the super shifter and the pog. You know, that kind of happens around the same time in the show. <laughs> uh, it's like, that's the crazy maniac part of the show. But yeah, the pog is fun. You can, you know, get the octave up or sub octave or octave up. Yeah. I mean, that's just fun. I, I use it a lot for solos. You know, when you want, honestly, I'll use the, the foot fuzz with it and the micropogs sound like they go really well together. 
I can give you a little of that if you want. Excellent. Yeah. Pretty cool. Very cool. Then my carbon, the carbon copy, uh, analog delay, MX Star. It's my favorite delay. You can really tweak it, play around. I, I've got a, with the last record, we had a song called Somebody's Always Trying, and I get down on the floor and kind of mess with the, you know, the repeat into the delay, and mm -hmm. you can make it make some really wild sounds, and, and you can get it to, to drop down and, you know, go really low with it. Yeah, play with the sweep. And yeah, play with the sweep. Get a little weird. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, kind of like doing that. Uh, for the, you said you liked the love letters. Uh, I don't have my slide up here, but how we did that was, we did that with this pedal, and, uh, and a, like a slide guitar and a vibe. Cool. Yeah. And you have a, a Rocky Mountain slide signature slide, is that right? I do, I have one of those, but lately I've kind of been going back to my roots and just and using brass, but I do like okay. my ceramic slides from them. Because you can get a range of tone and um, I've I kind of been finding more with the brass ones, it's got a slimmer profile and it's a little easier to control for me. Mm -hmm. um, especially because most of my guitars have lower action. Because I like to double up and use them for slide and for, you know, straight up soloing. Yeah. But, um, so I got to kind of keep it a little closer to the neck. But, you know, for brass, it's just for me, I get a little bit more control out of it. Less, you know, fret clanking and mm -hmm. uh, it's just a little smoother of an operation. So then uh, this brings me to my two newest pedals. <laughs> which Pretty I and loud. Nothing. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Oh, we're going this way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yep. sorry. We'll get to pretty and loud later. Forget all this. I don't want to this, this is barely being used. Oh, okay. Um, no, I mean, the loud is for the loudest, uh, you know, for my electric guitar. Pretty is for the acoustic guitar. Okay. I've got an LR Bags uh, pair acoustic DI. That's for acoustic. You can kind of EQ out the wonky frequencies and play with it a bit. Um, and then this right here, JHS tremolo pedal. It's so dang new. I can't remember what it is called, but... uh. Uh, Tidewater. Oh, there you go. JHS Tidewater Tremolo. I just got it. This is also its debut tonight for the baritone guitar. Excellent. So you need a little tremolo for a baritone guitar. Yeah, just pretty tremolo, you know, and you, I'm still working out the settings and everything. So then this, I didn't... I, I just got it. I'm just trying to, I'm playing with some reverse uh, delay. Oh yeah. In the show. It's really, I, I don't know what I'm doing just yet, but I know I'm gonna figure it out. I know, but it's awesome though, isn't it? Reverse delay is so much fun. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I hope I don't mess it up today, but um, the Line 6 DL4. <laughs> and I, I, I'm running it off the batteries because I, I, don't, I don't know, I guess you need like the 12 volt adapter or something special. Have yeah. You have to go get some kind of special adapter for it. but. It's kind of cool. I was messing with it this afternoon. You can um, get some really unique things out of it. Oh. I have to be really careful with how I do this. Instantly in Axis Bolded Love Territory. Yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I really, I, I didn't know that I could do this on a pedal. I was like, this is just studio trickery, but you can do anything live. Yeah. Anything you want. Yeah, which is great. We just sort of live in this golden age of gear. Yeah, you know, yeah. Which is I'm, pretty amazing. I'm a little overwhelmed by it. Like I said, I, I'm kind of, I, I came from like a pretty simplified place gear-wise. Like last time I talked to you, I was pretty out of my element <laughs> with the gear, but... um. <laughs> Well, you've got a cool it's pedal grown. board. It's grown. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 very cool. It's really yeah. personal to me, um, in the ways that I use it, and you know, that's all that counts. I'm, I'm still figuring out new ways to use it all the time, which is really fun. Yep. You got a gold mine on on the on the ground. And do you find yourself just sort of when you're in the middle of a show, that's maybe a little longer, just kind of winging it and hitting a couple of things and yeah, seeing what happens? Yeah, for sure. Oh, for, you find new things all the time. You're like, oh my god, I didn't know I could do that. Um, and then you can expand upon that. And that's the fun part of the live show is that there's you know, people and energy and things pushing you to do that. So, well, you've been growing exciting. your pedal board. You have a bunch of cool guitars with you yeah. on this tour. Anything on your gear wish list? Um, yes. <laughs> I've been trying to sweet talk Fender into like a Silver Sparkle Jazz Master. Come on, Fender. You, you heard it. 
I well, no, there's there's a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> we're really gonna make a Christmas list here. Uh, oh my gosh, I I don't know, man. Like I said, I I um, it's always nice to get a new guitar because it kind of pushes 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 you to be creative in different ways. Mm -hmm. Every guitar that I've I've gotten, like a new axe, you know, when I first started getting the Jaguars, it's it's amazing how something as simple as like a little bit of a tone change and feel on the guitar will really just change your perspective and your approach to playing and you learn something new and it's like it changes you so I mean right now I got my hands full I'll be honest with you yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah I mean of course but I was it all seems right for you though because gear. you always seem like a player who wants to just kind of yeah push ahead you know and that's a cool thing since I'm in Nashville like a 1947 <laughs> <laughs> Martin or a Gibson acoustic guitar would be great. I love I love those old vintage acoustic guitars. They get to the point where they're like paper thin, yeah. or they're they just like they yeah. weigh nothing and they sound amazing. Yeah, it is an and amazing. And they're like thing. twenty thousand dollars. So yeah, but they're beautiful. Like someday, maybe someday. Someday. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah. This was really terrific. I appreciate it. Have a great show tonight. Thank you. And good luck with the new album. Thank you very it's much. Terrific. Thank you. I appreciate it.